So uh, moving forward, I don't know, I just remember on the north side of Sioux Falls, they're doing some construction on there. And with that, some of these industrial hammers, it's just a, uh, a large piece of steel that goes up in a crane, comes back down, and is, I'm presuming, driving, I would think, steel pylons into the ground, okay? So when it goes back up top, it's storing that energy and then lets it go, okay? So we're just going where the numbers lead us, and with this, it says, what is the velocity of a construction? Crane's hammer, if the height is 16 meters at the top with uh, 5,033,000, no, that's not right, 503,328 joules before being released to make contact on a steel pylon. So that steel pylon is what we're driving into the ground. Then upon making contact with 105,304.05 joules is placed into the beam. Okay, so you've read the problem. So for the 38th, 37th time, okay? Are we getting better at this by the 37th time? A little bit. We are? Okay. All right. So after that 37th time, you've read the problem. What should you do? So what do we know in this problem? Um, the distance is 16. Okay. You, distance is fine. You can, you can use that. Okay. Okay. What else do we know? Something with joules. Energy. Okay. Now, upon doing that, we'll just put joules here. And joules here, just because we see it there and there. With how we read that problem, okay, the two types of energy we have are what and what? So it's one thing to say that, but then what's the difference between the two? Between kinetic and potential. We uh, had talked about this with so that like bow and arrow was an example. When, uh, so the potential energy, it says like on the swing, at the highest point of the kinetic energy. Kind of right, like because when it's at its highest point, what is not happening for just a fraction of a second? Gravity. Gravity's acting upon it, that's true too. Uh, nothing's happening because you're just stopping. Yeah, because it's not moving. So then, upon doing this, how can we tell the difference between these two um, energies? It says uh, on the bottom, upon making contact, um, upon making contact, one oh five with that one, and then uh, with uh, the first one, it says at the top. Yep. But what does that mean as far? Because you need to put the right energy into the correct formula or else it's just not going to work. It was just not going to give you the correct answer. Uh, the first one would be potential energy. Okay. And then the bottom one would be kinetic energy. Okay. And then the kinetic energy. Okay. 105304. 0 0.05, so then it's at this point, are we out of, no yes, yes, are we out of numbers? No, no we are not. There's still one more we have to comp compensate for. Nope. Nope. So gravity then, of course, we know is 9.8 meters per second squared. It's at this point we can say, what is the question asking? Okay, so we want to know the velocity. So if that's the case, we don't know. But looking at all this information, where is velocity found in these energy formulas? Um, K, E, and M. Which okay, so in this formula...
do we have everything we need? We've got the energy. This is a constant. But what's the problem on the right-hand side of the equation? You don't have the mass. And you're solving for velocity. So, of course, that presents a slight problem. But with the information that we have up there, what can we do? Well, we're not going to cross multiply because. Right. Why? Okay. Because what do we need to plug into this formula? We need the mass because we don't have that. But you had correctly said, okay. Just like I'm presuming we're following along back there, too. That's, that's what you would do, right? Okay. All right. So then we know that 503, 328, our potential energy, on the left-hand side would equal what's going to be on your right-hand side now. Okay. So 16 said so 9.8, and we'll just put M. There. Well, we can put it on the outside too because we're multiplying. And in this case, what would we do first? Are we going to divide to get M by itself? No, Okay. You're going to multiply those two, and we would get 16 times... 9.8 gives us 1568. Oops, that's not right either. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. 1568M. And then we're going to take what was on the left, put on the right hand side. Okay, now we want to get M by itself. Now what would we do? Divide. Yeah, we're going to divide those. So we're going to take 503, 328, divided by 1568, and gives us 321. Okay. I think that's where I went wrong because I had it in my mind that it was supposed to be 3,210 kilograms. Notice I have only 321. But we're still going where the numbers lead us. Okay? So now that we have our mass, we can put it up here because we have our kinetic energy. We'll go ahead and get rid of this because we don't need it anymore. So then we're on the home stretch. So we've got our kinetic energy, which was one zero five three zero four point zero five equals So, how are we going to get a nice linear equation here? You can, but you don't necessarily have to. I mean, we've been doing this long enough. What you're saying is putting this, putting this number over 1, which is fine. Okay? So then, uh, when you do that, you're, you're simulating that you're cross-multiplying, correct? Yeah, because that's what you're doing. So 1 times 321 gives you what? 321. 321. OK. And then what's 1 times v squared? v squared. OK. And then if we cross multiply here, what do we do in the other fashion? Cross Same thing. So you take 240. 105 
Okay, we're going to multiply that by 2. And that gives us, what, 210... Agreed so far? Okay. So how do you get V by itself? Divide. Okay. We're going to divide this side by 321. Just with the presumption we're doing the same thing here. Then that gives us... Um, 321 is supposed to have a zero at the end. Because it's supposed to be 3,210. See, that's what I thought. When I punched this in, That's I got 321. Anyone else get 3210? That's right. Yeah, that's right. 3210? Yeah. Oh, so I was right that first. Okay. So then, all right, that means that, okay. So upon doing this, we're going to divide that by 3210. Okay. And gives you 65.61. Yeah. Okay. So... Oops. That's part of the five there. Does that mean that we're done? No. There's one more step. What is that? Yeah, because this is squared, so you should get somewhere around eight. 8.1. 8.1. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Front row. Are we good? Left side. In the middle. In the middle, right side. Okay, middle, middle. Okay, I wasn't to the middle yet. It was front, middle. Now back, corner. Okay, so we can go ahead and erase this. Okay, the bottom one. Okay. All right, so... Bottom question, a rail car is moving at 6.35 meters per second and collides with a second car. What is the kinetic energy if 62,140 kilograms per meter per second are impacted on the car? You, whether you can say the first car or the second one. Okay, so what do we know in this problem? Okay. Go ahead and get rid of this. Okay, so the velocity was six point, yes, six point three five. And then, um, uh, you probably can't see that. I think this marker's about had it. And then at sixty two one four zero, it says k kilograms meter per second. But I thought it might be mass, so it's for, seems like momentum. Okay, so. What variable is this one? It looks like momentum. It is a momentum. Okay. Why would that be significant to have this momentum? Because what is the question asking? So what do you need to know to solve for kinetic energy? Mass. Mass and? No. Mass and velocity. In this case, we've got the velocity, but we don't have the mass. But how can we get the mass from that? Okay. We don't know. And then the kinetic energy. We don't know. Okay. So what are you going to do first? Oh, uh, no, that's not right. Would you agree? Is that right? Mass times velocity gives you momentum? Yes. Okay. So then how do we get M by itself? Okay. Do 
do we get uh, 9,785 point whatever? Okay, so 9,000. 785.83. Okay, so how do we find our, we'll just leave that up to you, whether, you, and I'll just put the answer up on the board because I don't want to prohibit you from time. Okay, so I'll hand out your vocabulary evaluation and we can get rolling on that. Okay, so very quickly, we wrap this up. We square the velocity, take it times the mass, divide it by two. Gives you that for kinetic energy. Okay, we'll catch up to you next time.